So I'm going to talk about um, a forgotten, almost lost, and partially hidden piece of history. At least part of it, I'm going to talk about new media arts in Latin America. I'm going to focus specifically in, in some part of that history and some part of the media production. And I would like to start with some several images from the DG Arts UNESCO knowledge portal that was done starting almost 20 years ago. Um, many of you, I'm sure you, you know the DG Arts projects or have been participating of the DG Arts project that was led um, by Teresa Wagner and other people from UNESCO. I'm going to show some of the images. Um, here you can see the DG Arts International Editorial Committee, part of that. And here, well, the different aspects and different sections of the DG Arts uh, project. But even if, if you go uh, through the different pages that I was recovering some time ago, this part, for example, about the young digital creators or a practical seminar to create simple electroacoustic pieces in easy stages. All this information that was done through several years of the DG Arts project, like this page about training, and you have these seminars, tutorials, etc. And even this full section, uh, the music using technology section, that I, it was the, the second part of my involvement with the DG Arts project uh, many years ago. Uh, even with this part, what happened is that, as you can see in this slide, different from the previous one, this is the, the original or close to the original, and this is what's happening now. So it says you are viewing an archive web page collected at the request of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the point is that most of these works, like for example here, where you have uh, in fact, what I was doing for this project, I, as far as I know, I was the first one or, uh, that was contracted by UNESCO to do a research on the Latin American history of electroacoustic music of the whole region. Before that, I was working, believe it or not, uh, even on what was happening in the media arts in Asia and Oceania because they didn't know what was happening there. And I have some information, so I was trying to help a little bit, but finally I was focusing in the region, in the region I know better. So, but if you see here in the Latin America and the Caribbean region, where I was writing these pieces of information, it was a long, long uh, report that they finally put it on the web, it was about 75,000 words in English. And there was a second report of another 45, thousand words, mainly facts, not like uh, comments, but mainly facts, dates, names, etc., etc. But again, if you see here, you're viewing an archive web page. So if you try to find this, it will take you a while to find the information uh, from the DGR UNESCO uh, project. Also, before we were seeing some uh, images in English, now you can see these images uh, in, I mean, this text in Spanish because there was an English version as well as a Spanish version of this information. But all this, once again, you're viewing an archive web page. So it's very difficult to find this information. As you saw before, the music and technology section, now you can see it in Spanish, mu Musica y Tecnología, the history of electronic music uh, in the world, uh, in the Latin America and Caribbean, in Asia and the Pacific um, uh, region of the world. And also, this is just part of the long, long, long text that were included in this uh, DG Art project. In this section about the electroacoustic music in Latin America in, 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 in Spanish, once again, or specific sections with different names, many, many names, hundreds of names from Brazil, from Mexico, and from many other countries. So this information, you can still find it, but it's very difficult to access to that. So one of my points here is just that, as you can see, you are viewing, again, an archive web page, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the points is that this was a major, major work, major research effort done by UNESCO and involving a lot of us, a lot of the people from the community in trying to bring information about the media arts, 
even if I'm focusing here on a specific part of media arts, electroacoustic and computer music, mostly, or mixed music or music together with videos or, or sometimes in sound installations. But still, the point here, the, my main point here is how all this major effort has been in big part lost because if you try to find the information, it's not easy at all because of this situation with the archive web pages. So I decided to take some screenshots and trying to, to show a little bit what was the situation. So um, part of showing this has to do with the idea of how we can preserve. I mean, in this case, we are trying to preserve the effort to preserve information or pieces about electroacoustic and computer music. So what can we do as a community to recover this kind of efforts and learn also from the past as we don't make the same mistakes because this is being lost and the effort and the amount of information and the, um, the, the knowledge enclosed on, on this um, project was really big. So today, if you're trying to access, you will see it more or less this way if you can find it. So the images are lost, etc. So as you can see, this is disappearing slowly, disappearing from our access. So this project and my my contribution that was called historical aspect of electroacoustic music in Latin America from the pioneering to the present days. As I said before, there was an English version and a Spanish version. Both were uh, complementing each other. One has 75,000 words, the other one was uh, 40,000 words. And this is the number of composers I was naming in those reports. So 191 from Argentina, 14 Bolivia, etc. This was done around 2003. That was 2003, 2004 was when I was doing this report for UNESCO and was published. Those numbers you can see with a plus sign at the right, it means that I'm not only talking about composers and what they were doing as, as an artistic output, but also people, I was mentioning people that were producing uh, technological innovation. So when, when, just let me go to the focus now of uh, about what kind of things I was talking in those reports. I was talking about how electroacoustic music and computer music was starting uh, in, in Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, Cuba, many other countries. But this was happening starting in the 50s or even in the 40s. So most of, more or less when things were happening, almost at the same time, certain things were happening in several countries in Europe. But usually we know the information of uh, these countries in Europe and it's very hard to find what was happening in Latin America. So those names here, like Mauricio Cagel, Juan Blanco, Reginaldo Carvalho, Juan Amenábar, José Vicente Azuar, César Francisena, Raúl Pavón, Hilda Dianda, Horacio Bajone, those are names, some names of the many pioneers, of the many, many pioneers in Latin America. Mauricio Cagel is well known in Europe. He lived he spent most of his life in Europe, but he was born in Argentina. He was studying in Argentina. And then he finally moved to Europe with a scholarship from Germany because he couldn't do in, in Argentina what he was expecting to do. So as you can see here in this catalog, uh, down, uh, during the 60s, like, uh, in, so you can see that Kagel was already producing electroacoustic studies and pieces between 1950 and 1953, 54, in Argentina, or works by other people in, in Argentina, also in several labs already in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Same in Brazil, where people were starting to do electroacoustic music in the 50s, or in Chile, Jose Vicente Azuar, that was doing electronic works like Juana Merabar in late 50s. Jose Vicente Azuar was also producing some uh, mixed, a, a hybrid works during the late 60s, early 70s in Chile. So it says, Así habló el computador. That's the way that uh, the computer talk. So he was producing his own devices. He was an engineer. He was producing his own devices with an analog digital music, computer music system. So let me go to talk a little bit about, not only about history and memory, but also about the problems 
the achievements and why to preserve, to document and to disseminate. Because at some point, personal archives became public with free access. So my way to help the community to have access to this information that was happening in Latin America was in part uh, producing some CDs in collaboration with Computer Music Journal. I was the curator of that Computer Music Journal CD like 23 years ago, more or less, or before that with Leonardo Music Journal in 1994 with the name that was published in Spanish, Musica Electroacustica Compositores Latinoamericanos. Now I see it like a breakthrough, you know, it's like publishing with a title of in Spanish of a CD that was published by MIT Press. Uh, it was not an easy task or all this too. So then, because in the UNESCO project was only text, so the Daniela Glove Foundation finally supported me to do the Latin American Electroacoustic Music Collection, to do preservation, documentation, and dissemination of recordings. So there are like over 2,000 audio files of 1,723 electroacoustic and computer music composition by like more than 700 from Argentina, more than 150 from Brazil, even from countries like Guatemala, Mexico, uh, Paraguay, Peru, Puerto Rico, so many words starting from the mid fifties. With information by pioneers, like for example, Jose de Oliveira in Brazil, a real important pioneer, maybe better known in Europe and in the North America than in Brazil. Well known in Brazil, but should be much better known. She was performing works with Senakis, um, with uh, Luciano Berio, with Igor Stravinsky. Uh, I mean, really a pioneer in Brazil. And he was, she was creating pieces like multimedia works that were premiered in the planetarium in, in Rio uh, in the early 60s with mixing all kinds of media, not just music. So if we go to another country, Raul Pavon, Raul Pavon was an engineer, one of the pioneers to create electronic music and computer music in, in Mexico, especially electroacoustic music. This was the first electronic music lab in Mexico, uh, started around 1970. And he was, together with Hector Quintanar, he was the person who was creating this lab. And he was, in the early 60s, before MOOC and Bukla, he designed this analog electronic sound synthesizer. So this was really an important a starting point, but was it is almost unknown. Its name is Omniform, and as I said, was a pioneering um, project to produce an analog uh, sound synthesizer. Juan Blanco, a very important pioneer from the Cuba electroacoustic and computer music, also is included after many years. I, it took me more than 20 years to get uh, his pieces in the collection, and now we have his music, most of his music, his computer and electroacoustic music in the Latin, America, Latin American electroacoustic music collection of the Daniel Langla Foundation. This is a special photo because at the right, you have uh, John Appleton, a very well-known pioneer of electroacoustic and computer music in the US that um, he recently died. And at the left, we have Juan Blanco in Cuba, in La Habana. This photo, this photo is a very historical, relevant photo with um, Juan Blanco in the middle with a cigar here. And if you recognize this person, that's the Che Guevara. So uh, that was the very early years of the revolution. So you have the Juan Blanco and the Che Guevara uh, in this uh, session. And here you have Juan Blanco and Juan Blanco with a meeting that was done in France with a lot of pioneers of electronic and computer music like Robert Moog, Max Matthews, Jean-Claude Rissel, Pierre Schaeffer, John Chowning, and many others. A really relevant meeting done in France. And this, it took me about 30 years to get this graphic I decided to show today here. We usually talk about the sampler, you know, the sound digital machine that can digitize any sound and you can use. And this was the big revolution in the history of music. So the sampler, the sampling machine was a really breakthrough in the way we do music today. 
But usually when we talk about the historical precedents, we talk about the Mellotron and we talk about uh, what was happening first in the late 40s by Chamberlain in the US and then Mellotron in the UK. But we don't talk. And there is a movie that doesn't talk about the multi-organ. The multi-organ depicted here was done a patent in 1942 by Juan Blanco. And if you analyze this, this is exactly the precedent of the Mellotron done many years ago or several years, uh, several years after that Juan Blanco was producing this, uh, this graphic in Cuba. And he had the idea of the Mellotron using not magnetic tapes, plastic magnetic tapes, but he was having this idea uh, using uh, ferromagnetic wires. So um, a different, because was not available the uh, plastic magnetic uh, tape at the time. So this is a major, major um, invention done by um, Juan Blanco. Let me show you briefly a little bit about Cesar Bolaños, another pioneer from, from Peru, uh, but he was doing a lot of work in Argentina during the Instituto de Tela, that was a major institute to produce new media, not only music, but in all aspects of new media during the 60s and early 70s until a military uh, government in Argentina closed the center. So this is a piece for tape, and it's a quadraphonic tape and guitar, but also um, Cesar Bolaños together with Cesar, um, with Mauricio Milchberg, a uh, scientist, they were producing some very early works uh, using computers and uh, musical instruments. So they, they were using uh, the computers to calculate the piece. So there were very early attempts to produce sound with a computer it was too hard, was too difficult, almost impossible, not impossible, but very, very hard. So at that time they were producing 1970, two pieces, Milchberg and Bolaños, they were producing a SEPCO 2 and a SEPCO 1 uh, calculated by computer. And they were presenting these pieces also in Buenos Aires. Much of this information is available at the Latin American Electroacoustic Music Collection. And also, if you see this photo, this photo is the first, is the first electronic music lab at the Ditela Institute in Buenos Aires. And those people there are not only Bolaños, but some of the people who became after the main composers in different countries around the world, in Puerto Rico, in Chile, and other countries. But from that, from that, in my last minutes, I was to, to show a little bit about Fernando von Reichenbach, who took this lab, the lab I was showing at the Ditella Institute, and transformed it into this one, an amazing major lab in the Ditella Institute in the 60s. So he transformed the old one that was there for about three, four years, and turned it into this one that was amazing. He even invented this instrument that was able to transform graphics, drawings with pencil, with a machine that was transforming this into voltage control and then into sound. So that was called the, I'm not going to play it now, I'm only going to show it this way and in the next summit, I will show it in full. So he transformed all these graphics that was drawn in pencil into this kind of graphics, complex graphics. And then finally, they were creating pieces like this that you can hear in the Latin American Electroacoustic Music Collection, like Analogias Paraboloides by Pedro Karievsky. So they were producing this kind of works in this new lab with this um, analog graphic converted done by Fernando von Reichenbach in Buenos Aires. So finally, finally, let me finish with one of my own words that was the, as far as I know, uh, was premiered in the EC, exactly the place where the, the uh, where uh, Crescentino was showing just a few minutes before. She was talking about Buenos Aires video and what was happening in the EC, the Institute of Cooperation from Spain. And in that same place, I, I was performing live interacciones. That was the first, interactive work created and performed in Argentina with digital sounds and images generated in real time. So let me play just a little, little bit of this.
Okay. And just to finish, probably, you know, this is the same guy as talking now, but just about 32 years ago. Okay, so thank you so much. I think that, that I was showing a little bit of a partially forgotten, almost lost, and partially hidden also. And this is a long story we can talk in maybe today or some other time. So thank you, everyone who was organizing this uh, summit, and also to the organizers of ICF 2022. Thanks.